Hey guys, it's me, Sonia, and we are on day two, week four. So yay. Um, this one is called Digging In. And like before, I haven't done this um, study yet, so I'll be doing it with you. Um, okay. So it reads, My boys love sports. No matter which one is in season, they, play, they want to play it. Ba basketball, football, baseball, they seem to have a hand in it all. Or should I say a foot? Uh, is it just me, or are you annoyed at all the specialized footwear needed for each sport? Have you noticed how the, ath how the athletic shoes they need for basketball and somehow not s are somehow not suited for baseball? And the ones for soccer won't quite work for tennis. You'd think some special interest group somewhere would coordinate all the foot gear so that the parents only required to per are only required to purchase one pair per kid, no matter what the sport. Because truth is, they all look pretty much the same to me anyway. But I know one but I know one shoe with enough distinction from all the others that makes me feel like I'm getting my money's worth. I believe the ancient Romans found it rather unique as well. From day one, make a list of any characteristics of the Caliga that were most memorable to you. Okay, so day one was yesterday. Uh, what was memorable was the many um, straps to, to keep it on so I'll put that the mini straps uh, and the spikes and uh, spikes on the bottom Alright, next it reads, holes in the line. One of the most unforgettable features of a soldier's sandal boots were the spikes that protruded from the thick leather soles, similar to the football cleats I bought for my sons last summer. These hobnails dug deeply into the earth, helping the soldier to hold his ground, to stand firm. Instead of slipping and sliding on slick terrain, causing their feet to, to be swept out from under them during intense struggle, the Caliga offered firm footing. This feature was also a critical factor in, man in maintaining their battle line formations. The soldiers would stand to shoulder to shoulder, one, one beside the other, in tight linear configurations, Bringing strength to the whole. To the whole impenetrable, secure. Wait, did I miss the page? Oh, bringing strength to the whole, period. Um, impenetrable, secure. The Caliga kept each person in that line steady and strong. Which meant the entire line was then steady and strong. Even if one soldier lost his footing, the hole in the formation would weaken. Well, the hole in the formation would weaken the line itself, leaving the whole army vulnerable to enemy attack. Um, from these four options, choose one Old Testament and one New Testament verse to study. Um, in what sense can you, as an individual, expect God's peace to keep you steady and stable? Right now, I'm on my phone. As mentioned yesterday, because I'm on my phone, I can't look up the verses. Um, I could go find my Bible right quick, but I just moved, so it's in a box somewhere. Not exactly sure where. Um, so, I won't be reading the verse. So, I'm just going to skip this portion. And move on to the next paragraph. It says, okay, good. Now I want you to broaden your perspective. 
Look back at the highlighted portion of the previous paragraphs and consider it within the context of the whole body of Christ. Remember, Paul's letter was written to the church of Ephesus. Sure, his instruction was directed to individuals too, but his focus was on their relationship with each other. Excuse me. Soldiers by definition operate as a unit. Gladiators co competed as individuals, but a soldier could never be victorious without his companions. So when Paul outlined the armor that believers are to wear, he didn't, he didn't only have individuals in mind. He was thinking of living, breathing entity of the church as a whole. Uh, to the extent that individuals are armed for battle, so to the church, one believer united with another, um, is prepared to stand as one warrior, girded in God's power against the prince of darkness and the culture. Ephesians 4, 1, 16 goes into great detail about the church and why its internal unity is of paramount importance. Turn to the, this passage in your Bible, read it slowly, then meet me back here. I don't have my Bible, so. Um, okay, next question. How does the church benefit when individuals within it pursue peace? Um, I didn't read the... Oh, excuse me, guys, it's always late when I'm doing these. Um, I didn't read the verse, but I might have an answer for this question. So it says, how does the church benefit when the individuals within it pursue peace? Um, if the individuals pursue peace, then together, as a whole, it will be a peaceful environment. Uh, they can cause a peaceful environment if we're all pursuing peace. Um... Have you seen the enemy breach the, the holes in the line of your local church? Uh, if so, how? Oh. Um, yes. Um, I would say yes. Um, and how so? Well, um, like most churches, at some point in time, there's drama. Um, dramas of the enemy. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about acting on stage or doing the, the dance praise type of thing. I'm talking about drama like people being catty. Like um, a teenager in the church gets pregnant and then some of the other teenagers or the adults start gossiping. That's a breach in, in the church, uh, a hole in the church. Um, or someone's cheating. A lot of times you'll hear that pastors have committed adultery, and then there's a breach, a hole in the church. Um, let's say um, two people are living together, and they're not married. That's a hole in the church. Um, you know, just little things like that. That's a hole in the church. Or a hole in the line, as, as they say. Um, how about the global church community? Oh, I want to put my answer down. I didn't write it down. Uh. All right. Okay. So the next question is, how about the global church community between denominations and segments of the church? Uh, so what was the question again? Have you seen the enemy breach holes in the line? Um, I would say yes, kind of, I think so is my answer. Um, there are a lot of people that don't see different denominations as being Christian or the right Christian. Um, I don't know how that's, I mean, is that considered a, a, a hole in the lines? I think so, because if we're not on the same page, then that's like one of the soldiers slipping, you know? We're not on the same page. We're trying to be a, a straight line, and one of us slipping, 
and the other's like, well, you're slipping because X, Y, Z, and whatever. I don't know. Um, okay, next. Use, using Ephesians 4.16 as a reference point, what would be the ill effects of the body that isn't... Oh, excuse me, guys. What would be the ill effects of the body that isn't fitted and knit together? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, Ephesians 4.16. Okay, it says, From him the whole body, fitted and, and, fitted and knit together by every supported ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. So the question is, what would be ill effects of the body that isn't fitted together? Well, if the body fit, fits, fits together, is supporting the ligament, and it's promoting growth, and it's building itself on love, then ill-fitting would be non-supported, um, growth-stunting, um, not in love. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, so the ill effects. Non-functioning. Non-functioning. Um, growth stunted. Stunted. And not in love. Alright. Next it says, Jews and Gentiles of the first century were extremely ag and ant agnostic. And an ant and ag and I just said it. Ant agnostic towards one another. Their history was filled with contention and offense. So they could so they could have never imagined any scenario in which two groups could unite in love and harmony. They had neither the desire nor the willingness. And yet the peace of Christ established on the cross was powerful enough to bridge even the colossal divide. Even this colossal divide. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he pointed to this relationship as proof of the extraordinary power of God's peace. Not just theory, but in personal experience. It was strong enough to establish stability and harmony then, and it is powerful enough to do it now. Uh, are, are hurt and anger lingering between you and another person? Between your church and another group across town? Between one race and another? The peace of God can bridge the gap and bring healing and restoration. And when it does, not only will it cause people around here on this planet to sit up and notice, but it will declare the manifold wisdom of God through the church to the rulers and authorities in heavens. In other words, unity among one divided brothers and sisters puts Satan promptly in his place. All right, so unity is a good thing. Let's unite. Um, take time to stop and pray right now for your church. Uh, ask the Lord to bridge any holes in the line. Revitalize your congregation with a fresh passion for pursuing peace with one another. All right, well, here's the thing. Um, though I am a member of a church, uh, I don't go there. So a couple of years ago, when my daughter was a couple of months old, uh, she's two now, but when she was a couple of months old, I went to a church that was down the street from where, from where I lived. I would walk there. And uh, one day I joined the church, but I didn't get the right hand of fellowship, so technically I'm not a member, even though I take members' classes. And I stopped going there shortly after I took the members' classes. So, to pray for a tr my church right now, I don't really have a church, I don't think. Um, but I will pray in general. I will pray for the church. So, in Jesus' name, I ask you, Heavenly Father, that you will help your people to be united 
and let go of the petty stuff. I pray that your people will see that the church needs each other. I pray that they will do what the song says. I need you to survive. I love you. Um, I ask that the church will show true love to each other and that they can see each other as valuable members of the church. I pray that our issues that are dividing us will become smaller and smaller until the point where it's fully diminished. In Jesus' name, amen. That's my prayer. Um, okay, so bumpy terrain. The very fact that the soldier needed to don such specifically uh, engineered footwear implied that his job required transversing some harsh terrains. Good traction and adhesion were crucial for victory. Since standing firm... Uh-uh, come on, Paige. Since standing firm and maintaining the line could mean the difference between life and death for each soldier as well as his peers, only these shoes would do, and an imitation would not be sufficient. The terrain of Christ's Christian living uh, can be rough too. Dealing with other people in a way that is healthy and promotes peace requires a supernatural endowment that can only come from God himself. Only these shoes, the shoes of peace, will do. Prayerfully read Colossians 3, 12, 15 in the margin. Okay, God, please help me see what you need me to see in Colossians. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, therefore, God's chosen ones, holy and loved, put on heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, accepting one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, put on love, the perfect bond of unity, and let peace of let the peace of the Messiah to which were to which you were also called in one body control your heart. Be thankful. All right. <clears throat> Ask the Lord to reveal to you people in your life who most need to experience each of the following from you. Record their names in the spaces provided. Um, okay. Heavenly Father, please reveal to me the people in my life that most need to experience um, compassion, kindness, humili humility, gentleness, patience, acceptance, forgiveness, and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, record their names and spaces provided. It might need to be the same person for all of them. Okay, well, <clears throat> this one might take a while. And in that case, I'll skip it for now. Um, because as of right now, no one's name is coming up. So, yes, that's that. But I could insert any name, really. But, um, okay. Because most people need compassion, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, acceptance, forgiveness, and love. But this one, we're praying for it, so it might take a little while. In the meantime, I'm going to skip to the next paragraph. Um, the New American Standard translates Colossians 3.13 this way. Bearing with one another, the implication being that the journey towards unity can often be difficult. Patience is a must. Grinning and bearing it is sometimes a requirement. The terrain that leads towards rest restoring and maintaining peace with God's people can be like uh, walking uphill, depending on their personality, weakness, and intentions. But, to, uh, but choose to do your part anyway. Hold the line so there won't be any holes where the enemy can take advantage. This does not mean you'll be best friends with everyone. It only means you'll be careful to make sure that the necessary strife and divisions don't permeate and weaken the purposes of God. Then the church will be intact, strong, and ready to advance.
Turn to Ephesians 4, focusing on verse 1 and 3, and, and also verse 15. Record any similarities you can detect from Colossians 3, 12, 15. Once again, don't have my Bible. Um, moving on. Walking in peace and pursuing it with others is Paul's prayer for us. In, in today's lesson, by reading and receiving this hope and desire for all God's people, I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and the length and width, height and depth of God's love, and to know the Messiah's love that surpasses knowledge, so you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians three seventeen through nineteen. Okay, so now we have the actual intel. Now let's see, what did we learn today? That's what I feel like the actionable intel is. What did we learn today? So, first things first, we learned that uh, different sports require different shoes. But the one shoe that is really important was a Roman shoe because it helped them stand firm. Um... Yeah, that's what we learned. That's the first thing we learned. Uh, what next did we learn? Hold on. Next we learned... What did we learn? That without the shoes or without the peace, um... And without the church standing firm together, that we lose function, we our, our growth is stunted, and there's no love. Um, and we learned that from reading Ephesians four sixteen. Um, like I said, the other verses I didn't read, so I can't learn from them if I didn't read them or hear them. Um. What else did we learn? Uh, 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 uh. That Christian living is tough. And sometimes we have to grin and bear it. Yes. So, uh, actual intel, that's that. I have to write it later because I didn't write down any of that. But it's, it's kind of short. It's short anyway. Alright, so that was day two. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video.